Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Shara Zorel here, and welcome to part one of What If Shigaraki Was a Hero. Just wanted to greet you guys by just saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat, and so we begin. I'm sorry, I'm running late for work. It really isn't my place. I'm sure the police or a hero will help you. How many times had the young Tenko Shimura heard this drivel already? The itchy child hadn't been able to keep track of how long he had been drifting through the streets. And yet, it felt like an eternity of excuses as to why no one could help. Why no one could even call a hero or even the police to the child. It was exhausting to the increasingly disillusioned Tenko. Big cities always attracted far greater threats, namely villains. Two-bit thugs that would incite chaos for one reason or other. Legions of people would drop everything to watch a hero take on a villain. So why couldn't one help him? Was he being punished? Did they know what he did? Somehow? After a while, Tenko figured that perhaps he deserved not to be helped. That endless purgatorial wandering was a fitting punishment for a child that had killed his family. One clear night, the young orphan made his way to a park in Musutafu. Plastic and paper were scattered throughout the entirety of the fields. It was almost as if the litter were the blades of grass and the leafy plates themselves were the ones that had been haphazardly tossed onto the ground. Digging through the trash, the young Shimura found a half-eaten candy bar. The sticky, melted chocolate had bits of other garbage inside of it that the pale boy had to tediously and methodically pick out. Its wrapper, despite having cocoa smeared on it, still reflected that pale moonlight that lay just above the light blue-haired boy. And yet, he could barely even take a bite of the spoiled candy before it crumpled and disintegrated in his very hands. No! No! No, please! The young Tenko impotently pleaded. He could only watch helplessly as the gelid breeze carried away what was meant to be Tenko's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The child's arms fell limply to his sides. He collapsed onto his knees, pondering to himself, Why? Why was this his lot in life? Why was he given a quirk like this? A quirk that could only destroy whatever he touched. It didn't matter whether it was man-made structures, food, or even family. Tenko could do nothing but release a scream into the night. A banshee-like wail that could only be carried as far as the echoes would take it. Meanwhile, inside the same park, a frail, emaciated-looking man strolled alongside the park. Ragged blonde hair fell onto the man's shoulders whenever it wasn't being pushed less than gracefully in the frigid current. He wore a blank white shirt and a pair of jeans that looked about three sizes too big for him. The man carried with him a translucent white bag that dragged along the ground wherever he brought it. With rigid movements, he would kneel down, pick up a piece of trash from the dirty floor of the park, and place it inside the plastic sack he brought along with him. It was a slow, monotonous cycle that the man seemed content with, at the very least. That was until he heard the scream of a child. On instinct, the man swiveled his right foot towards the sound and spun to face it. Could this child be in danger? Perhaps? His doctor and former sidekick advised him, no, begged him not to use his quirk, at least until his injuries had healed. But what kind of paragon of justice could he call himself if he just let the shrieks of a child go unchecked? In an instant, without even thinking, his body began to swell and enlarge. The once cadaverous body being rejuvenated, his body rippled with overwhelming muscle that seemed to appear out of nowhere. His unkempt hair shortened itself and became tidy, with two elongated tufts of hair protruding towards both sides. Last but not least, his mouth curled into that of a confident smile. The glint of his teeth was practically a beam of light for all who felt hopeless to take shelter at Baskin. He was the number one hero. He was All Might. Taking a moment to cough into his arm due to the sheer weight of using his quirk at the detrimental condition he was in, <coughs> he sprinted at full force towards the call of distress. The kick of his feet sent a plume of dirt in the opposite direction of where he ran. The sound of the monolithic man's feet crushing the ground beneath him was enough to startle the young boy out of his crying fit. <laughs> you needn't fear any longer, All Might bellowed heartedly, for I am... The champion of heroism trailed off. There were no villains, nor were there any disasters. It was a frightened, lost child. Tenko shook and trembled so much, Toshinori half believed he would shatter. The number one hero was taken aback by the child's fright. He took notice of the scars of the young boy's face and arms. An abusive household, perhaps? Nonetheless, the giant of a man 
took a knee to see the child face to face. In response, young Shimura hurriedly backed away from the man. All Might raised both open hands to his shoulders. His smile became more gentle as he tried to diffuse the boy's apparent fear. Take it easy, son. All Might whispered in hushed reassurance. Can you tell me your name? The young boy began hyperventilating. <laughs> Each rapid breath complemented by the sound of concrete crumbling underneath his palms. Toshinori had taken notice of the sidewalk withering away. Perhaps his quirk was stress-based? Calming the child down became more paramount in light of this, lest he turn the park into a barren wasteland. Come on, All Might gently said, slowly extending a hand towards the boy. I know people who can help. Tenko wrenched his arms back. His eyes began flooding with salty water as he continued scooting away from the giant man. <laughs> The homeless boy whimpered. I can't! The symbol of peace was taken aback. This was a first for him, that someone was afraid of accepting his help. Did his quirk also affect things that weren't inorganic? Did it affect people? His smile widened as he inched his hand closer towards the boy. Now would be a good time as any to test his hypothesis about the vagrant child's quirk. Don't worry. All Might spoke, feigning confidence. Everything will be fine. Tenko's breathing became more steady as he continued to maintain eye contact with the hero. His credence was infectious. It even caused the young Shimura to reach his hand out towards All Might's gargantuan palm. Much to the boy's surprise, the hero's hand remained intact. Scooping the young lad up, Japan's paragon made a dash towards the police department. He had no idea how long until the kid worked himself up again. When they arrived at the station, Tenko gripped onto All Might's costume. He associated the police with being in trouble. After all, he figured, why shouldn't he be? And yet, still, he didn't want it to be like this. He figured for sure he would go to jail, and he didn't want that. The sheer anxiety began to activate Tenko's quirk, causing All Might's tea to start disintegrating. Hey, remember, All Might whispered, everything will be fine. His grip on All Might's shirt loosened. Luckily, only the large hero's shirt took the extent of the damage. A couple of hours later, Tenko was led into a room with a cat-headed officer. All Might promised the boy that he would wait right outside the room for him, that nothing would happen to the child so long as he was there. Approaching the number one hero from behind was a familiar face to the Paragon. <laughs> Thought the doctor said for you to not use your quirk. Detective Tsukauchi snarked. Startled, All Might immediately deflated into his emaciated form. Coughing up blood into his shirt, he turned to face the detective. <coughs> <coughs> well, I... <coughs> <coughs> I wasn't planning on using it, Toshinori weakly retorted. Tsukauchi shook his head as he smirked at the number one hero. Do you ever? Everyone had figured Toshinori's main weakness. It wasn't a physical one, despite his injuries. It was his overwhelming need to be a hero, even at the detriment of himself. So of course, everyone who knew of his injuries knew he would go back to using his quirk again, even if many implored that he didn't. After a while, the cat-headed policeman exited the room to speak with All Might and Tsukauchi. His face was that of grim concern and confusion. What happened? What'd he say? Toshinori asked. Well, Sansa trailed off. I asked if he had a home to go to, but... Even so, it looked as though the cat was still processing what he had just heard from the boy. He said that his family had... Sansa trailed off once again. It was still bizarre, the things he had heard. That his family was killed when his cork activated. That they had been dead for quite some time now. I'm going to send a squad of police to the address the kid gave me, but for the time being, he has nowhere to go. Did you get a name for the family? Tsukouchi asked. Yes, sir. Said his family name was Shimura. In that instant, everything had frozen for the emaciated form of All Might. Shimura? That's impossible. His late mentor told him she had no family. Not a brother? A cousin? A son? He heard of none of them. Toshinori's stature had faltered slightly as he took a reflexive step back. Impossible. All Might whispered to himself. Toshinori's disconcernment did not go unnoticed by the two officials. Are you alright? The detective asked. The number one hero shook his head, as if to snap himself out of a trance. Rubbing the back of his neck, he turned to face Sansa. You said he has nowhere to stay, All Might queried. The cat policeman gave the blonde exemplar a simple nod in response. Well then, what if, and just hear me out for a second, the boy came to stay with me until everything gets sorted out. Naturally, this question was met with odd looks from both the detective and the policeman. It was certainly an odd question, coming from the otherwise seclusive Toshinori. It's just until you guys find his parents, or until he's brought into foster care, Toshinori defended. Besides, a police department is no place for a boy of his age to be staying. The two authoritative officials looked to each other. It was as though they were silently debating amongst the both of them. Perhaps this was the better alternative for the time being. After all, he was the number one hero. Before long, 
they had averted their attention back to Toshinori. You need the kids, okay? Sukauchi said. But other than that, there doesn't seem to be an issue. Instantly bulking up, All Might took a moment to pose in front of the door. Though to the untrained eye, it seemed he was being unnecessarily hammy, the truth was, he was hyping himself up. He never had to make this request before, and even the two lawful executives were wary. As he was stepping towards the door, the wooden plank propped itself open as the hero made his way towards it. Tenko peered timidly from the doorway. Hello? I'm sorry I didn't say like you told me to, but... The young Shimura boy whimpered. All Might kneeled to face the boy. The police officers are going to do whatever they can for you. All Might said in a soft voice, until everything gets sorted. Would you like to stay with me? Tenko looked perplexed. Even though what the bystanders had told him was that of callous indifference, it really happened. Not only had a hero come to help him, the hero had come to his aid. It seemed too good to be true, and yet here he was. Toshinori extended a hand out to the boy, which Tenko grabbed onto without hesitation. All Might said his farewell to the police officers before taking his leave with young Tenko. It didn't take long for the pair to arrive at All Might's house. It was a lavish abode. Clearly a great many people could live here comfortably, let alone one. Tenko felt like he didn't belong in the presence of such a house, despite Toshinori's invitations. After the both of them had made their way inside, All Might had tea at the ready for both of them. The two sat at opposite ends of a table that looked almost comically small compared to the Paragon. As the boy tried to hold his teacup, the stress of having to go to a foster house had caused him to accidentally grind the teacup into dust, the tea splattering all over the table. The boy looked embarrassed as he tried to retreat into himself, like a turtle escaping into a shell. Toshinori noticed the boy's chagrin. Standing up, he kept his gaze on the boy. Can you keep a secret? All Might asked. Tenko looked up, curious as to what the secret can be. Steam began to erupt from the hero's body. In an instant, the once indomitable form of All Might became a shriveled figure. Sitting back down, the table looked more appropriate for his size. Tenko couldn't believe what he was seeing. My quirk is... Toshinori trailed off. It's like a balloon, you see. Right now I'm all scrawny, but when it's activated, I look all big. This isn't without its downsides, though. As Toshinori said this, he coughed into a napkin. <coughs> Tenko looked bewildered by this. The blonde man began pushing his untouched cup towards the young boy. All you really need is control. Tenko looked at the cup reluctantly. He began inching his hands towards the dainty porcelain mug, mentally preparing himself to hold it once more. As he gripped onto it, he noticed that the cup wasn't crumbling this time. He shot Toshinori a beaming smile. The yellow-haired philanthropist reciprocated the grin. I think you'll do just fine, Toshinori remarked, displaying genuine confidence. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in the story thus far. Hope you enjoyed it. Now there are a few things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes deep into the facts and lore of a wide variety of anime. It's sure to expand your weeb knowledge for all kinds of series, guaranteed. On top of that, we have a third channel called We the Celestials Naruto What If. It's what we do on this channel already, but in the vast world and lore of Naruto. Go check it out if you're in the mood for some jutsu action. On behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. If you're perhaps interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I would like to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being that we only accept members 16 and older to join the crew. You can find us on our Discord, which you can locate in the description below. Our Discord is an all-around fantastic place to be, whether you're a fan or looking to join our band of misfits. All you gotta do is hit up the recruitment server and sign up for whichever category of work that fulfills your interests. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video, so thank you all for watching and have a great day!